Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.4, an Eagle Dynamics KA50 Black Shark 3 module. Welcome to Tutorial 4, Data Link. Today I'm going to demonstrate the use of the Data Link for storing targets, transmitting them, receiving them, and making use of ingress points. Uh, so, first I'll demonstrate how we get set up in the cockpit, and uh, we will then take off, and I actually have a wingman with me today, whose voice you may well recognise when the time comes. But uh, in any case, uh, first part of your setup is to look down here, just underneath the, uh, the INS head, where we have the controls for the data link. Now I'm the flight lead today, so I'm going to make sure that my ID number is set to number 1, and that I'm set to COM for Commander. Um, my wingman, number 2, will have to make sure that his ID is 2, and that he is set to wingman mode. There is also an option for a receive only mode uh, on this system. And you can only have up to four aircraft participating in the data link in the KA-50. After that, we can go ahead and bring up the map on the Abris. And if I zoom in a little bit, just to make it easier to see, uh, you will note that I have a little icon here. It looks kind of like a tadpole with a number two in it. And that uh, means we can confirm that we are indeed uh, receiving data link information. So the data link provides surveillance, it's called, where we can actually see where our wingmen are. They'll be numbered and they'll show up as these little tadpole icons. Uh, and it also gives us the ability to store and send points using this overhead panel here. So on the overhead panel here, we have a, a series of categories that we can use. We have armored targets, uh, we have anti-air targets, we have other, and we have ingress points. You then also have the receivers, uh, who you intend to actually send something to. You can send to the numbered members of your flight, or there's also an option to send to all. You then also have the ability to clear items, to set them as your current DL ingress, which uh, gives you steering cues on your HUD and uh, gives information to your autopilot. And then you have the send or memorize button here, which will either immediately send or it will store uh, information in your data link. One last thing to make sure is that you're using the correct frequency. Uh, your VHF-2 radio here, your main uh, flight comms radio, needs to be tuned to the same frequency for everybody because that's used by the data link. And then also in preparation, I'm going to turn my laser into standby so that I'm ready to use that when the time comes. Okay, so that's all of the setup. Uh, we're going to go ahead and fly to Waypoint 2 now, and a short distance from Waypoint 2, I've set up some vehicles for us to do some demonstrations with. So, let's go ahead. 2. Take off and fly direct Waypoint 2. Okay, so, going to go ahead and lift. And I have steering cues on the HUD right now for Waypoint 2. Gear up. been a while since I've flown the Black Shark, but it's uh, it's feeling very familiar. Bring us around. I also have steering information showing up on the Abris, just to make my life e even easier. There we go. En route towards the target area. And while we're on en route, we can see that 2 has lifted and is also accelerating towards the target area. Uh, I might actually just momentarily scale out a little bit here. There we go. And I'm going to arrest my climb. We don't need to get too high. Perfect. Okay, direct inbound waypoint two. So the procedure to use when either storing or transmitting a data link point is that you would point your cheval at it, and you can do that using the helmet-mounted queuing system or just steering it as normal. Uh, you would lock that target, and you can then select a category and store it, or you could select a recipient and immediately send. Normally, however, you're going to go ahead and store data link contacts first, uh, and then reset the weapon system. Each time you store a data link target, you need to do a full reset of the system. Uh, and you could then later bring that up by cycling through those different categories. Okay, I've got my targets in sight here. I'm just going to let uh, 2 know that. 
two targets in sight, going to get into a hover around about here. Okay, so I'm just gonna <laughs> try and try and slow down and stabilize myself, and then I'll just pop the aircraft into the auto hover mode. And there we go. That's it, getting nice and slow now. When we're below about uh, 50 kilometers an hour, we get the line on the HUD, and I'm now actioning. Oops, no, wrong button. I'm now actioning auto hover. We get confirmation auto hover in the overhead and the aircraft will now uh, oops, fly itself. I'm going to give it a bit more collective there and hit the collective clutch. And that's us. We're in a, a stable hover. So uh, I'm actually just going to slew the, the cheval. So I'm going to hit cheval on cage and I'm going to go ahead and slew it down. And I can see that we have some targets off here to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the very first one and I'm going to lock it. And because of that double T symbol and the distance being indicated, I know that that's been locked. Uh, I'm going to have to actually scale out a little bit so we can see uh, where I'm looking exactly. So you can see where the cheval is looking here. The yellow line and the yellow uh, brackets tell us what uh, the, the kind of rough location of what I've locked is. So on the overhead, I'm going to choose category 3 for other, and I'm going to hit Memorize. Uh, and that is now stored, and I'm going to hit Weapon System Reset. Cheval goes blank, and you can now see that on the Abris, I have a little square, which is the standard symbol for other, and a number one. I've now created a data link target number one. Uh, if it was an armoured uh, target, it would show up as a diamond. If it was anti-air, it would show up like a miniature house. Note that also the ingress point symbols are a house, but a much bigger house. A little bit confusingly. Uh, now, pressing the category button... It allows me to cycle through ones that I've got, and it's illuminated while I have uh, one of those data link points selected. Uh, once I cycle past the end, it, it goes out again. I only have the one, so I can press it once, and you see that number one is flashing. So now, if I wanted to send this data link uh, target to my wingman, I could do so as follows. With it illuminated, I can choose the recipient, in this case number two, and then I could hit send. Two, standby data. And when I press send, the lights go out, my system is reset, but uh, my wingman will now have received that target, and he simply presses mem. Data okay, two, uh, when ready, go ahead and store a target to send to me. So, we'll, we'll, we'll see what that looks like. So if I watch the overhead, when the time comes, uh, I will see flashing lights indicating that I've received data. Once I've received his data target, I will then demonstrate how I can get my cheval looking at that target right away. There we go. So I have flashing category three. I'll just let him know I've got it, actually. Uh, two, one has received data. Uh, so yeah, it, it flashes the category. I've just received an other, and it flashes who I received it from, number two. I then press the memorize button, and that is now stored. And if I now look down at my Abris, I now have a target two. So if I, if I zoom all the way out so you can see what I'm doing here, I can press category three once. I first see the one that I created, I can press it again, and I can now see the one that I was sent. And if I press it again, the light goes out. So let's uh, select other number two, and then if I select DL Ingress, that lights up, and I get steering cues both on my HSI and on my HUD to that selected target. You'll also notice that on now on the Abris, I have crosshairs over it. If I now press Cheval Uncage, my cheval will immediately slew to that target. Now, there's always going to be a little bit of an accuracy due to INS drift uh, and um, slant range and things like that, but I can I can see uh, the target here that he has assigned to me, and I've now got eyes on that target. Uh, two, one has eyes on. 
and I would now be able to engage this target. So that's great. Uh, now what I'll do is I'll demonstrate how you can actually do an immediate send of a target without category. Now of course when we do this we need to tell the recipient what the target's category is. So here we go, I've, I've uh, locked up a completely different target now and I can, oh, I need to actually deselect DL ingress mode. Uh, I can now simply press number two and press send. Two standby data, other category. Okay, and it's away. And he should have immediately received that. Excellent. Note that I haven't stored it, so it's not stored in my system. It doesn't become one of these numbered categories. And I can now hit weapon system reset uh, and we're, we're back to normal there. So that's an immediate send. Uh, and that's also how you do the, the stored uh, ones. The last kind of thing that you might want to do is an ingress point. Uh, so one moment while I give two a command. Two, select an ingress point for me and then transmit. I will do the same. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to very quickly use my helmet mounted sight and I'm going to choose a point all the way over here. Oh, actually that's quite close to one of the targets. I'll make it just the other side. Uh, I'm going to turn off my helmet mounted sight now, so that's out of the way. And uh, with that point selected, that's now, that's now locked, I can select ingress point and set memory. You'll now see that I've got a big house with a number one. I'll do a weapon system reset just to clear that symbology. So I've got a house with a number one. I can choose that as such. It's now flashing. Recipient number two, and then I could hit send. Two standby data, ingress point. And he will now have received that. Oh, wow. Standby data. Okay, and he's going to send me my one now. Watch a ground. IP received. So, he's now given... Oh, wow, he's chosen basically the exact same location. Okay, fair enough. That's okay. Um, what we will do now is we'll demonstrate how we can actually get the aircraft to automatically fly to that ingress point and then engage one of the targets given. Uh, two, I'm going to go IP inbound first, uh, and then after a short delay, you should do the same. So I'm going to select the IP, sorry, the ingress point that he gave me. I'm going to select DL ingress. You'll now see that I've got crosshairs over that uh, data link ingress point. I'm now going to leave auto hover mode, and I'm going to get the aircraft moving. I'm going to give it just a little bit of forward momentum. You'll see again that I have steering cues both on the HUD and on the HSI for that particular point. And of course, it's also showing uh, on the Abris. Uh, once I'm above about 50 kilometers an hour, I'm going to go ahead and hit Root Autopilot. There we go. You'll notice that it's uh, it's actioned on the overhead there. It says En Route Course. And the aircraft will now fly itself to that data link ingress point. Once I arrive at that point, uh, I can then turn to attack one of those targets. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to fly all the way to this ingress point, uh, and then I will. Uh, basically get the auto turn on target to turn me towards one of the data link targets. Yeah, a bit more speed up first. There we go. That's fast enough. The aircraft will maintain me on course and it will maintain that speed. And you can see that two is uh, staying with me there. There are icons appearing on the Abris, so we can see exactly what they're. Doing. Uh, two. Once I arrive at the ingress point, I will attack the target that you assigned me. Now, of course, <laughs> I'm overflying the target area, which is not something you would do IRL. In fact, the main reason for having these ingress points is to to 
avoid overflying the enemy and keep, keeping you out of range of them. But uh, anyway, this still works as a demonstration, I think. He's going to get there before I do. Uh, and I'm going to engage the target that he's assigned me using cannon. Just so you get to see some pew pew today. Okay, just about there. He's actually coming into a hover himself there. You can see on the Abris here him turning around. Very nice. Okay, I'm just about in position. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and disengage the on route autopilot. Note that if I allowed it to actually reach the ingress point, you would get route end, and then the autopilot would continue flying on the last assigned heading. But I'm going to disengage the autopilot at this time and bring the aircraft into a hover. Okay, and we're going to bring it around. Roughly facing the right way. There we go. And we're actually just about in a hover there. I'm going to get the aircraft stabilized, and I'm going to go auto hover. Aircraft is now in auto hover. I'm going to disengage DL ingress mode. I'm going to select the other target that he gave me, number two. You see it's now flashing. I'm going to select DL Ingress. I'm going to down here select Auto Turn to Target. I'm going to press Cheval on Cage. Cheval is roughly on target, although I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing it where where it is right now. Uh, as always, there's a bit of drift here. I would expect that it's going to be slightly further to the to the right than what I thought. Uh, simply because of slant. Actually, no, it's going to be further to the left, isn't it? Is the slant. Yep, there we go. There's my target. There we go. One target acquired. Two, target acquired. Two, clear to engage. So, I'm going to go master arm on, flip down my cannon trigger, and... Oh, actually, that's the one that he's firing on. Okay, fair enough. And he's killed it. Two, good kill. So that being the case, I will find another one. I was obviously looking at his one. There it is. This is my one. Locked. And we'll fire. We'll squeeze off a few rounds here. That's a kill. Fantastic. So that's the entire procedure for making use of the data link. You've got the ability to store points to immediately send them. You can use ingress points and you can also make use of the autopilot in combination with DL ingress mode. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option of joining Deepak's ground crew. Thank you very much to those of you who've already done so. Big thanks to Harish Rajan, Byron Farrow, Storm Kimbari, Channel Wright, Mangash, J.R. Walker, Chandler Hedgewald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Frantic Stone, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdin Kertan, Veli Tapani Korpikanas, Tiger Moto, Sean I Am 81, Charts, and Pink Floyd. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you all next time. Say goodbye to the nice people, Dot Chuckles. Bye-bye, nice people. <laughs>